Hello, my name is Marek and today, surprisingly, I don't have a game box because I have a prototype of a game called Explore the Mountains of Godai. Uh, this is the prototype because this game will be crowdfunded on GameFound and I have received the prototype from the publisher of this game, so thanks a lot for sending it to me. And Explore it is a fantasy uh, series of fantasy games, fantasy RPG board games, uh, and uh, Mountains of Godai is the fifth volume in the series they are all standalone um, they have each game in the Hexplorer ser series has got a different uh, story usually some changes in the gameplay different heroes different characters uh, so you don't have to own or play the previous games in the series to enjoy uh, the mountains of godai mm. this time this game is based on uh, japanese mesoamericanic um, we could say mythology and the big serpent jetty is uh, coming to our world in order to destroy it and you have to stop it so um, in a second i will tell you how the game play more or less or what the gameplay is about because this is a fairly complex game uh, this is the rule book for this game it has got over 110 pages uh, i will not explain all the rules to you I will rather try to tell you what the game is about, how you play this game. If you have played the previous Hexplored games, I will also mention what's new in this game, because I think that this uh, fifth volume, The Mountains of Godai, is most unique Hexplored game to date, because volume one, two, three, and four, they shared more or less the similar gameplay. Of course, you had different bosses, different enemies, but the core gameplay was the same. Here we have tower defense elements, so it's um, quite new in the series. So I will in a second show you what the game is about and what you can do in this game, and then I will tell you my opinion on uh, Mountains of Godai. This is Explored the Mountains of Godai prepared for a game. There are a lot of things here, don't worry. Uh, normally when you play the game you can set it up in a better way, I just wanted to fit everything in the frame. Please remember that this is a prototype copy, so some rules can change in the final edition. The components also will have much better quality. Uh, and as I said earlier, I will not try to explain all the rules to you because it doesn't make sense. The rulebook has got over 110 pages, so there are a lot of rules. I will rather try to tell you what the game is about and what you can do in the game, so you can decide if Explore the Mountains of Godai is a game for you or not. This is the fifth game in the series. Uh, this is a standalone game, you don't need the previous explored games to enjoy it. Of course, if you played the previous games, it will be easier for you to uh, learn the rules, but this can be your first explored game without any problem. Just uh, be prepared for a lot of uh, learning. Uh, so this is more or less the game. This is the game map uh, that you will use to move around your characters, move around your heroes. You will visit different locations, fight with monsters, fight with bosses. Uh, here we have different decks. Harvest deck, encounter deck with monsters, power up deck with cards that will modify your um, abilities and stats and skills. Here we have a commission deck, here and here, because in this game we have two capital cities of two different civilizations. And of course you can have two capital cities of the same civilization, but more fun way to play is that you have one capital city of one civilization and the second one of a different one. Commission deck for capital city one, commission deck for capital city two. As I said, different quests that you will be able to finish during the game to gain rewards. Uh, you have your miniature. The whole party of heroes moves at the same time. There is not a separate miniature for each character. You move around as a whole party. And we have this evil boss, uh, this boss uh, jetty. I hope I pronounce it properly. The giant godlike snake that wants to destroy everything. And your goal is to stop this... Uh, villain uh, before um, everything is destroyed you can basically win the game if you survive uh, until the end of the game i will tell you in a second how it works or you can win the game by defeat this evil villain um, and you lose the game if both capital cities get destroyed so you have to survive um, this explored game is different from the previous explored games because uh, you will not only move around the map to do different quests and fight monsters and fight bosses, 
because the previous Sekiro's games, they were like, you could say, typical fantasy adventure games, and you were heroes, your goal was to defeat the boss, the evil character, then the evil, evil villain. And here you also have to do it, but apart from the fantasy elements, like walking around the map and doing quests, you will have a lot of tower defense mechanics. Because you are not alone in this game, and you have uh, the defenders of the of the land to help you. So you will build towers, you will build fortresses, and the defenders, they will help you to stop the waves of evil monsters. Mm. So each character, each player has got a character board. There are a lot of different characters in the game. Uh, this game is, uh, you can say, asymmetrical because each uh, each hero plays differently, you have different stats, like uh, attack, defend, different masteries. Masteries like, are like different abilities, and each character has got different abilities, so you have to um, you know, read them to know how to play a specific character, different type of classes, your skills to navigate, explore, survival. Uh, you have your vitals, like health and energy, and you have your backpack. In this game, you will use, uh, this is a dry erase board, and you will use uh, you know, dry erase marker, to write everything down, to erase something, write again. So it gives a feeling of a mm, traditional RPG game. Uh, this is a race card. When you create your hero, you pick different class and different race. You combine it together and you have a unique hero. The race modifies your starting um, stats and abilities mm, and also give you a special you know, power that you can use during the game. Mm. As I said earlier, uh, you will move around the map uh, to do different quests and, and you know, fight with monsters and bosses and everything, but you will also use the defenders. The defenders in the prototype look like this. This is just a you know, 3D print. In the final edition of this game, they will look much better. Mm, you will have cardboard towers and fortresses and everything. But uh, in order to um, build your defenders, you will have to spend the resources. And the resources, this is the new thing uh, added in this Hexplorer game. Because uh, you have some kind of an economy in this game, because you have resources that you will have to gather, you have resources that you will have to spend in order to build and upgrade uh, various defenders. For example, a tower, this is uh, uh, one type of a defender, it looks like this. Uh, you have different stats like health and power and range and you can spend resources to build it to rebuild it to upgrade it if you upgrade the tower you will create a fortress you can improve it by modifying different stats so you need resources and um, to do it you will gather the resources from the map different type of terrain different type of locations allow you to gather different resources and you have this place card that explains everything. You have different types of resources like ore, lumber, recruit, essence, sky metal, specialist, ethereal ore and living crystal. You will gather these different resources during the game and then you will spend it to modify and upgrade your towers, your defenders. Here everything is explained exactly what you can spend and how many uh, of each resource to modify everything. But resources are very important during the game. Um, apart from resources, you have elements like fire and water. And in this uh, prototype, they look like this. You have these uh, tokens. Sometimes during the game, you will have an option to gather resources or you will re uh, receive resources as a reward for doing uh, various things. And you can use these resources to modify your hero, uh, your character, but also the defenders. But you have to be careful because, for example, if you modify your character with water your character will be immune to water damage but will have weakness against fire damage because fire fights water so this is the whole element table uh, what is weak against what and what is immune to what uh, but you can modify your character with this elements so resources are used mostly for defenders and elements are used for defenders and your heroes mm, so how the game looks like more or less the whole game is divided into two types of, uh, you can say, rounds. Uh, first type of round is the harvest phase, uh, in which you will move around the map. Depending where you end your movement, you will 
have a chance to visit different locations and you have this capital cities and you have temples, you can buy different equipments, you can uh, get bounties, you can do different things in different locations, just like in previous Hexplored games. If you end your movement on a boss, you will have a chance to fight with different powerful bosses in order to defeat them, in order to get a very uh, cool rewards and power-ups and uh, treasures. Uh, but also in the harvest phase of the game, you will get resources after you end your movement. You can move in this game in many different ways. You can move recklessly or cautiously or normally. Uh, you can move on roads or sometimes you can climb mountains. And uh, to climb the mountains, you need a special gear. You have to buy this gear in a city, for example. Then you will harvest resources depending on your character. You have different range and Depending where you end your movement, you can uh, gather resources from surrounding uh, areas. Then, uh, after you end your movement, you have the event phase, as I said. Depending where you ended your movement, you can do uh, perform different things. But also in the event phase, you can spend the resources that you have to uh, modify the defenders, upgrade them, buy new defenders, for example, new towers, modify the temples, uh, not only the temples, but also all the both capital cities, they are also treated like defenders. They have their own health and stats, so you can modify the capital cities. You have to basically prepare for the upcoming siege for the monsters that will appear uh, on the board. Um, at the end of the event phase, mm -hmm. after you gathered everything, after you have done your things, you will take the top card from this villain deck. You have to prepare this villain deck before the game starts. The rulebook tells you exactly how to prepare it because apart from different cards that uh, are not really nice to your heroes because there are only bad cards in, in this deck, uh, there are four siege cards. And when you draw a siege card from this deck, it will mean that the harvest round, the harvest phase of the game ends and uh, you will start siege. Siege means that a lot of uh, scary monster Monsters will appear on the board and they will march towards your defenders, they will march toward your capitals, and they will try to defeat those locations. If both capital cities are defeated, you will lose the game. So what can you expect here? You can expect some discoveries, you can expect some events, some cataclysm. Cataclysm means that you will place those uh, special tiles on the board. They are very dangerous, but you can harvest uh, different elements, tokens from these locations. Uh, but as you see here, from time to time, you will have the siege card. There are four siege cards in the game uh, because the whole game lasts four sieges uh, or three if you choose the shorter variant of the game. When Usually when you reveal a normal card, it gives you some uh, means plus one because there is this uh, whole calendar here where you will track which siege you have or how many months or days have passed since the previous siege. Uh, but also each card in this deck, apart from this uh, siege card, shows you some type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, die. Mm, in this game, we have a special set of element dice. They are here. And after you take the top card from the villain deck, you will roll a die. And depending on the result, you will add a card from this five siege uh, decks, depending on the results. So each siege deck is um, connected with different type of element, like fire, water, air, and everything. So after each villain card, you will add a siege card here, sometimes one, sometimes two, depending on your role. And here we have different types of monsters and different types of enemies that will appear on the board and will march toward your uh, defenders. You don't fight with them like with normal monsters or bosses uh, like in previous Hexplored game. They have different stats, they have different uh, attributes, they are similar to your defenders, but they will march and you will have to defeat them. By defeating them, uh, you will gain different rewards. So uh, the more turns have passed during the harvest phase of the game, the more enemies will appear on the board. And when you create 
when you add Vich opponents to the game, you place them, you have Siege 1, 2, 3 and 4, you will place them in different locations, like here, sometimes I here, for example. Uh, I don't want to explain how it works because it's too many rules, but basically you will add those cards, uh, you know, here, here and here into different um, locations. Uh, when you reveal a Vich card from this deck, the harvest ends, you will not be able to harvest anything, and you will place uh, this Vich banners. You have four of them, each one is um, connected with a different wave of enemies. You will place them on the board. You will roll a um, D10 die to check on which portal they appear, then you will place one of the Vich banners, for example, let, let's place, uh, I'm not sure which one is uh, which, here, this one, for example, here, let's place this one here, and for example, this one, um, I don't know, here. And this means the Vich phase of the game has started, you reveal the top card from each, basically from each deck, and here are the enemies that will try to march toward your uh, defenders. The Vich phase of the game looks in a way similar to the Harvest phase, because still at the start of each Siege round, you will use your hero miniature to move around the board, you will be able to visit different locations, you will be able to visit cities and temples, you will be even able to fight with bosses, but you will not be able to harvest anything. You will be able to visit your defenders. You can also spend the resources to modify your defenders. But uh, at the end of each uh, witch round, uh, you will move those um, banners, those waves of enemies, towards different defenders. Uh, sometimes even this evil boss appear on the board and this boss, this villain, will also march toward capital cities. The banners, the ways of enemies, they will also always try to march tovar, towards uh, defenders that have this ability called magnetic, so they attract these ways of enemies. All the capital cities, they have this ability, so if no other defender on the board uh, has magnetic uh, ability, the monsters will march toward your Capital. Here is the, the movement, like it's 2 for each 1, 2 for each 2, and 3 for each 3, and they will move. And if they are in the range of uh, each of the enemies has got different range, shown on the card here. If the enemies are in the range of, uh, of your defenders, they will deal some damage, also shown on their cards. And then your defenders can uh, defend. So if an enemy is in range of your defender, you will roll die and then you will deal damage. Mm. Earlier, as I mentioned, mentioned during the harvest phase of the game, you have marked each turn with this uh, X here. And it meant that a specific number of days or months has passed. Mm. So when there is siege phase of the game, at the end of each siege phase, you uh, erase one of the um, dots here. And if you erase everything, the siege has ended, or if you manage to defeat all enemies. So uh, either way, if you defeat all enemies, this is the best option, not always possible. Uh, the siege ends. If there are still some enemies left and you didn't manage to defeat them, but the siege phase of the game is over, you will flip them down again and then we, they will come back in the next siege phase. When siege phase ends, you remove those banners and again you will be in the harvest phase of the game. You will move around, you will harvest different uh, resources, you will try to rebuild and upgrade your defenders. At the same time, you will try to uh, level up and uh, modify your characters so you will become stronger because one way to win the game is to survive all four sieges so uh, when you reveal a siege 
card 2 and Fitch for card 3 and then Fitch card 4. If at the end of 4th Fitch, one of the cities is surviving, uh, has survived, you win the game. But you can also try to win the game by defeating this uh, villain. One way to defeat the villain is to deal Fitch damage to this villain miniature when it marches and moves toward your defenders. But another way is, when this opponent is on the board, to go to this opponent with your... Uh, to go to the villain with your heroes and to fight it. And this is the level 10 uh, boss. And you will fight this boss like any other boss in the game. If you manage to defeat it, you will uh, win. And the, you will win the game. Another new thing in uh, the Mountains of Godai is that when you die, the game doesn't end. You will be revived if in one of the capital cities, but you will lose a specific number of game turns. You don't uh, end the game when you die because you have all the defenders and they want to help you just like you are helping them. Uh, one more thing that I didn't explain is this uh, encounter deck. Uh, in this encounter deck you have different enemies. And I wanted to tell you how the combat looks like in the game uh, quickly. If you haven't played previous Hexplored game, you have this battle mat. Of course, you will write on it with this uh, dry erase uh, you know, marker. Uh, each enemy has got different stats, like health and energy and different type of attacks. Just like your character, you have also health, energy and your stats. At the start of each combat round, you will choose one of the type of the attacks that you want to perform, if you want to regular attack or defend, or if you want to use one of your special abilities, special masteries, then you will roll d6 for your enemy, depending on the die roll. Uh, each enemy has got different type of attacks. For example, 1, 2, it will do this. For 3, 4, it will do this. 5, to hex, it will do the third type of attack. And you will fight with this enemy, you will try to defeat it. There is a way to resist from combat, but basically you would like to defeat this type of enemy. If you defeat enemy, you will gain rewards, sometimes resources, sometimes power-up cards, sometimes you will get food or gold. Uh, you can spend gold in cities to buy different equipment. Uh, the fight with bosses is more or less the same. It's just that bosses, they have different, uh, more attacks, more varied attacks. You have better... Um, prizes for fighting with bosses, but they have a lot of uh, different abilities and they have a lot of different passive abilities, so they are far more uh, dangerous. Uh, this is briefly explained how you play this game. I haven't mentioned everything because in this game you also have the sky tiles uh, that are like floating on the board and you can climb those, those sky tiles to harvest resources, to get elements. You can even build towers on top of them. To climb them, you need special equipment, but the monsters moving around the board, they cannot. Some of the monsters can climb uh, up the sky tiles. Some of them don't. So this is another part of tactic and strategy. Um, what else I haven't told you? I'm not sure if I have told you about this harvest deck. At the uh, start of each harvest round, you uh, take one card from this deck, it will give you another resources. Sometimes it will uh, give you a chance to find treasures. So a lot, a lot of things are going on in this game. Basically, uh, if you have not played this game earlier, any explored game, if you think of Mountains of Godai, this is like a mix of fantasy adventure game combined with a tower defense economy mechanics. And if you played the previous explored the games, the first part, the harvest phase, is very similar to previous Explored. Moving around the map, visiting different locations, fighting with monsters, fighting with bosses, doing different quests. But there is this whole resource management aspect where you have to gather resources and you have to build defenders and you have to fight with the waves of the enemies. Or maybe you should try to defend the evil serpent in order to win the game. So this is basically what Hexplorer the Mountains of Godai is all about. Let me tell you what I like and what I don't like about this game. So now you know what this game is about and more or less how you play this game. And uh, 
this is the prototype so don't forget that a lot of things may be different in the final edition of the game some rules may be different so my video is based on the prototype that i have here uh, i will also want to tell you that i'm a huge fan of explored games i have all the volumes here behind me uh, this is definitely explored the whole series is in my top five favorite games of all time i cannot tell you which one is my most favorite because i love all of them it's like asking uh, which child is my favorite one uh, but i love explored games and i love this game as well um, sorry but that's the true but i will try to uh, tell you what things you may like in this game and what things you may not like in this game so you will have uh, uh, so you will, you will be able to decide if this is the game for you things that i like and you may like in this game i think this is the best rpg experience in a board game uh, you can really feel like playing old school rpg games where you have to write down all your stats and equipment with your pencil on the character sheet uh, this is a modern game of course it's a board game but if you like rpg games and you have played rpg games uh, you will find a lot of RPG element in Explored, uh, all Explored games and in this uh, game as well. Uh, great thing is that you have a lot of freedom in this game, you have a lot of ways to uh, win the game, to advance your characters, you can focus on doing the, the quests, the commissions, or you can uh, fight with bosses and enemies, uh, you can even win the game in three uh, different ways. So. It's really cool, it's like a sandbox RPG fantasy game. Uh, there are many different uh, enemies, many different encounters and enemies and bosses and they all feel different from each other and unique and different from the bosses and enemies that were in the previous uh, volumes, previous um, explored games. So it's really, really nice. Uh, the game is modular. Uh, the, the map where you will move on will always look different in each game uh, so this is great that you don't have a fixed game board but you create the map when you discover new areas uh, i love the artwork in this game and i think that this game has the best explored artwork the best artwork in the whole explored series because all the cards in this game they have some kind of an art uh, on them in the previous games you had this power-up card that allowed you to uh, advance your character they didn't have any artwork at all now all the cards they have beautiful beautiful artwork and um, what's really cool is that the game this game even though this is the fifth game in the explorer series it feels fresh and thanks to this tower defense uh, mechanic to the um, economy that you have in the game the resource management the, the thing that you uh, in the harvest part of the game, you will walk around the map, just like in previous explored games, you will fight with bosses, you will do some quests, but when you have the siege part of the game, you have to help your defenders, there are the waves of enemies moving towards the capital cities, so it feels very, very different, different and fresh. And uh, this is true to all explored games, this game play, plays really great solo, you can play it with one character if you want, so it plays really, really good. Of course, you have more characters, you have more variety and synergy between characters, but you can play this with just one character. What are the things that you may not like about uh, Mountains of Godai? It's a very complex game, and it has got a lot of rules in the rule books, on the place cards that you will see, some of them you can see here on the table. You have additional rules on, on cards and a lot, a lot of things to learn. If you don't like complex games, um, you shouldn't start. Uh, you shouldn't start with this game. If you don't like complex game at all, you don't. You shouldn't play any explored game. But uh, I would say that this fifth game in the series is a quite complex one. So maybe it's better to start with explored volume one or two, uh, and not this one. If you don't like uh, heavy and complex games. Um, the gameplay is rather long, it's not a game that you can play in 2-3 hours. Most of my games in this volume, in previous volumes, they lasted for 5-6 hours. When I play Explorer game, I usually leave it on the table for uh, 2 or 3 days, and I play each day for 2 or 3 hours. I play the games 
my game solo, so it's not a problem. Uh, but it's a quite a long game, and, and also you need a huge table to play this game. Uh, you have a big play area, the map is big, you have uh, the uh, character boards for each uh, character, you have a lot of place cards that you have to place on the table to write things on them, and uh, you need a big table to play Explore It. Um, some people may not like the fact that you move as a whole party on the map and you like uh, you have to take all the decisions together. Of course, each player has got a separate player board with different uh, equipment and different stats and abilities that are useful during combat. But uh, in most cases, you as a whole group, you have to decide what to do together, where to go. You cannot split. It's not like each character has got a separate miniature and you can do your own things. You have to move and decide as a whole group. Uh, and I would say that if you really like fantasy games and adventure game, this volume 5, The Mountains of Godai, there is quite a lot of economy in this game and uh, resource management because you have to harvest resources, you have to spend the resources to build towers, you have to upgrade towers and rebuild them and uh, modify them. So this explored game introduces some economy in this, uh, to the series. So if you only like the uh, adventure part of this game, of Explored games, fighting with enemies and fighting with bosses and going to dungeons, and you only want pure fantasy RPG adventure, then you may not like this whole economical aspect of the Mountains of Godai. I have to say again, as I said at the beginning of this part of the video, that I love this game, I love this volume, I love the Mountains of God, I, I cannot wait to play the final version of this game. I have to say that even though this is a prototype, this game is quite finished in my opinion. Everything already looks great, of course, the quality of cardboard and card, it's, it's not final, because this is just like a printed version of this game, but... Uh, it's a great game and a great addition to Hexplorit game and I'm not surprised that they wanted to add some new elements to the game uh, in the tower defense uh, mechanic here because you cannot do... Uh, of course you could do... each Hexplorit game could be the same, just new enemies and bosses but I really like that, uh, that Jonathan, the creator of this game, he, he wants to add something new and fresh in each Hexplorit game and this one is most unique from all the five volumes I have played. Should you start with this volume of uh, Explore It? I'm not sure, it depends how heavy games you like. If you like heavy games, okay, you can try this game, uh, but just remember that this volume five is more different than the four previous volumes, uh, but just be prepared to learn a lot, a lot of uh, rules uh, before you start playing this game. On the other hand, this game is most unique in all, from all the Explored games. Most beautiful because the artwork is amazing. You have artwork on all element, elements and all cards. So I leave it up to you. Uh, great fantasy game. If you love adventure games, if you like fantasy games and RPG games, you have to play uh, this game or any previous Explored game. I'm sure that during the campaign, uh, you will be able to uh, buy any other previous explored games and uh, any previous expansions and campaign books and everything that was released. So definitely check out the game from campaign. Uh, you will find link in the description of this video. Click the like button if you like this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, visit me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Links will be in the description of the video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.